milk, cheese, ice cream. Maybe some of your favorite foods to eat. And around the world, products that are consumed on a daily basis. When we are born as humans, we possess an enzyme called lactase that allows us to be able to digest dairy products. Dairy products containing the sugar lactose. And so as an infant, we possess and our body is able to produce the enzyme lactase that can break down the sugar in milk and other dairy products. As we get older, it is most common and typical for humans to lose the ability to produce this enzyme lactase. About 60% of the population has some sort of reduced ability to produce the enzyme lactase. Why is that and how does this enzyme allow us to be able to enjoy dairy products? Today we're going to investigate how does this enzyme work and what factors can influence the ability of this enzyme to be able to function properly. So today we're going to use our uh, 2% milk here as a way to be able to investigate enzymes and specifically how they function and then also how changing some environmental conditions can influence uh, those enzymes. I'll start by introducing the products that I have here, 2% uh, milk. Uh, I have some uh, digestive supplements, lactase enzyme, uh, essentially a pill that you would take before you would consume some dairy products if you're lactose intolerant, meaning you're not able to produce the lactose uh, enzyme, lactase. And then I also have some uh, diastics here. Uh, these test for the presence of glucose in the liquid. They're usually would be used for somebody who's diabetic to test for the presence of glucose in their urine. Today we're not going to use any urine, but we're going to use these to test for the presence of glucose uh, in our milk products or other uh, samples that we're going to be testing. Because the sugar lactose is actually a disaccharide, meaning it's composed of two different monosaccharides. And those monosaccharides are glucose and galactose. And so these diastics here will allow us to be able to test for the presence of glucose. And so we'll start today by adding some of our milk to a beaker. The exact amount is not too critical, but we're going to go for about 25 milliliters here. And I'm going to take one of my diastics and I'm going to place it into the milk and leave it there for about uh, 10 seconds or so. And while this is sitting, pause the video and think about what will you expect or what would you expect to observe for this test, testing for the presence of glucose. So I'll swirl this around a little bit and then go ahead and take it out. Shake it off. And we'll compare it to our chart to observe and see if there's any glucose that's present. After completing the test, it looks like there is no glucose present. Uh, we had a negative test results. Uh, the, the green didn't change color on our diet stick. Why is that? We know that lactose is a sugar that contains glucose and galactose, yet there's no glucose that's testing positive or is present. Why? Now that you've thought about maybe why that is, we're going to repeat this process and test for the presence of glucose again, yet this time I'm going to first add some of our lactase enzyme digestive supplement. And what I've done is I've taken a couple of these pills and I've ground them up with a mortar and a pestle and I'm going to add just a little bit of the pill in powder form to our sample. Swirl this up. And then I'm going to repeat my testing process by placing a diastic into the milk that now contains the lactase enzyme from our digestive supplements and let it sit for about 10 seconds. Think about what you would expect to observe this time. We'll give this a little swirl again as I take it out. And now we'll compare to our chart. And when comparing 
a portion of our diastick here has changed and it looks like I've got about half a percent or 500 milligrams per deciliter of glucose. Why is that? Why now am I seeing a positive test result for glucose? I'm seeing a positive test for glucose now because by adding the lactase enzyme, it allows the sugar lactose that was in the milk to be broken apart. That enzyme's job, its function is to break apart that disaccharide into the two monosaccharide pieces of glucose and galactose. And in doing so, it releases those glucose molecules that then can be tested and found using our diastics. In this next part of our investigation, we're going to look at how, at how does heat influence the ability of enzymes to function. And so here I've got a small beaker with about the same amount of milk, about 25 milliliters. And I've had this on a hot plate for a few minutes to the point where it was bubbling to the top. Uh, and if I use my veneer probe thermometer, I find, see what the temperature is here. It's currently over 85, 86 degrees Celsius. So it's pretty hot. Uh, whereas room temperature is about 22 degrees Celsius. So it's quite warm. I'm going to first test for the presence of glucose again using the same method as I did previously by taking a glucose test strip and placing it into my sample. We'll swirl it around and leave it there for 10 seconds. Give it a swirl before I take it out. And then take a reading. And not too surprisingly, I find that it has a negative test, meaning no glucose present. Looks like we're still over 80 degrees Celsius. Secondly, I will add a little bit of lactase enzyme like I did previously. Mix this up a little bit. And then again, test for the presence of glucose using a glucose test strip. And we will leave this in for about 10 seconds again after swirling a little bit. Check our temperature while it's sitting. Looks like we have dropped a few degrees we're about 73 degrees Celsius, so a little bit less than what we started. But for this quick demonstration, that, that change won't greatly influence our results. Give this a swirl and take it out and compare it to the original and to our test strip. In doing so, it appears that our test is really kind of negative, meaning there's no glucose present. How would the presence of heat then influence the ability of this enzyme to be able to react? Why might the presence of heat or the increase of heat alter or modify this lactase enzyme? Why would this enzyme not be able to function and break apart our lactose sugar because of the presence of heat. What we see happen with all enzymes is they have a specific range of temperature that they function best. They have an optimal temperature and as you move away from those, that optimal temperature, the enzyme becomes less and less effective to the point that it may not be able to function at all anymore. This is called denaturing or enzyme denature. And what we see in this example is because of the presence of heat, our enzyme has denatured or literally broken apart. And in doing so, it's not able to function and carry out its primary purpose of breaking apart lactose into glucose and galactose. And we see that and we know that by conducting a test with our diastics and observing no glucose. We've already gone through this process without heat and we know that the lactase uh, digestive supplement does in fact work by the positive glucose test. And so we, we can know that the only thing that's changed is the addition of heat 
and that heat has caused this enzyme to denature and not be able to function. And the last portion that we're going to test today, we're going to look at how does the enzyme lactase work with common table sugar or sucrose. Sucrose is a disaccharide similar to lactose, but sucrose is made from the two monosaccharides, glucose and fructose. And so here I've taken some distilled water and I've added table sugar and heated it up to, cause, to um, allow that sucrose to be able to dissolve uh, and then let it cool down to room temperature. And so this is basically sugar water, uh, kind of like soda, but without the fizz and without the flavor. I'm going to first take one of my test strips and using the same procedure add it to the sample, give it a swirl, let it sit here for about 10 seconds. As I'm doing so, think about what do you expect this test strip to test? What, what results would you expect to see knowing that sucrose contains both glucose and fructose as monosaccharides? So we'll go ahead and take this out. And if I compare it to my chart, it looks like it's a negative test. And so this test strip uh, and testing our sucrose solution has a negative overall test. Again, like before, I will add some lactase enzyme. Swirl it a number of times to try to get it to dissolve and mix up a little bit. And then use the same procedure to test for the presence of glucose after I've added the lactase enzyme. We'll swirl it a number of times, mix it up, and leave it in there again for about 10 seconds. This time, as we're waiting, think about again what do you expect to see in our results. Swirl this a couple of times and then take it out. And then placing it next to the original before adding the lactase enzyme and comparing to my chart, it again looks like it's a negative test. There's no uh, lactase, uh, excuse me, there's no glucose present. Why? What this demonstration shows us is that the enzyme lactase in our dairy supplements only work on the sugar lactose. So the enzyme lactase is only able to break down the sugar lactose. Although sucrose is somewhat similar in being made of glucose as well as fructose, lactose, glucose, and galactose, it's different enough that that enzyme is not able to break apart our sucrose sugar. And so what this shows us is that each enzyme is specific uh, to its particular substrate, what it reacts with. And in this case, lactase only reacts with lactose. So what we've observed in these demonstrations is that enzymes are able to break apart uh, different substrates into different products, uh, as we saw with lactose being broken into glucose and galactose. Heat can negatively influence the enzyme's ability to function, and enzymes only react with a very specific uh, input, a uh, very specific substrate. Hopefully this helps you to better understand a little bit more about enzymes and how they function and how different factors can influence them.